Welcome back to another video here on Squadding Quads. And this is a little bit different than our normal affair. You'll notice I'm not quite as bombastic as I normally am. And that is because this is a viewer request. This is one of our members who's bought himself a few quads. He's got himself a TX-15 and he's struggling getting started. And once he gets started, we all know that he's going to be absolutely brilliant at it. But I could have walked him through it one by one. But I figured I'd make it into a video because... Ultimately, there may be other people out there struggling that this will help. But I also understand and respect that this video probably isn't going to do particularly well on YouTube just because of the way the uh, the search and the alphagram works and things. However, if you've got anybody who you know is really struggling to get the first few steps started on their FPV journey, please do send them this video if you think it'll be useful for them. Right, let's get on with it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on our TX-15. And to do that, we this is the power button here, and we just long hold. And then we release. Now it's going to give us warnings of switches and throttles. You can either just get rid of them, or you can just adjust the, the th throttle and the switches, whatever it's telling you about. Okay, so... So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a model. Now the chance is, if you've got a brand new TX-15, it may well already have a model set up by Radio Master. But if it doesn't, this is how we're going to do it. So we're going to hold, long hold the MDL button, and that shows us the models that we've already got set up. And we're going to press new in the corner here. And we're going to press new model. And we're going to go with blank model so that we can work through everything and we know exactly what we need to do and how we need to do it. So once we're in this screen, we're gonna press MDL again. Now, we're gonna scroll down and we can name this model. So I know that what we're gonna do for this fella is start him on his journey on the Pavo 20 Pro. So it's just a keyboard, nothing special here. Okay, and then unlabeled, you can label it as a favorite or you can just leave it as unlabeled. And then you've got model image, which the only problem with model images, it doesn't give you a preview. So unless you know what it actually is, it can be a it can be a bit uh, of an issue. So we'll uh, we'll not actually select. In fact, we'll select the two twenty just just because it's legendary. Now it's going to ask me, do I want the internal RF on or the internal RF off? Well, if we leave the internal RF off, it means that our ELRS isn't going to work so we need to turn it on and we're going to select CRSF and CRSF is of course the protocol for crossfire now we have got an option in here to instantly bind our quad and we could do that but I'm going to show you the more unified way of doing it that everybody shows you just so it makes a bit more sense later on down the line external RF should be set to off which it is trainer timers leave all these for now we can deal with them not a problem but we're not going to deal with them at this moment in time okay so then up at the top you've got all these little labels up here there's a couple of things that we're going to have to do to deal with the basics and that is we're going to need to go to this one nope this one this is our mixers tab and if you went into Betaflight right now and you threw a switch, as I showed you to do when you set up your arm in, etc., nothing would happen because in your mixers channel, you don't have any mixers enabled. So if we come down and press the plus button, go to channel five, and we don't need to name it. It's adding, asking us what the source of this switch is going to be. And we want it on SA. So as you can see, because we're in the mixers, it doesn't matter which position that's in. So press return. And do this for every single one of the switches that you intend to use. Okay, channel 6. Now nothing happens if you don't select your source. Scroll down to channel 7. Press the button in. Go down to source, press it in, and then throw the switch that you want to be there. Channel 8, go to your source, throw the switch that you want. Oh, let's go 
go back into it. Channel 9, throw the switch. And you can have these as well. I'm going to stop at just those switches for now, so as to not confuse you. So I've selected this one here for my pre-arm, and I've selected these four here, just to make it easy. In fact, we'll just add one more on to channel 10, and that will be again. So you go down to source, you press the button, and then you press the switch. And the switch I pressed there was this one. So essentially, we've done everything we need to do now in the controller. The next thing we need to do is bind ourselves a quad. So let's get one. I'm just going to turn this off a minute. And again, we're going to be looking at the easiest way possible for this. Now, this particular member has got lots of quads, but the most safest one initially, I think, is going to be his Pavo 20 Pro. Now, to plug this into Betaflight, which we are going to need to do to set up those switches, you do need to use this adapter. And this adapter plugs in to here, and then it has a USB board on the end of it. And then you just get your USB and you just plug it in to here like this. As you can see, that will then power everything on. And we can see underneath here, we've got a couple of LED status lights. And if we just leave this for a second, we can actually see what they mean in a second. So we can now see that the green LED has gone from flashing normally to flashing really fast. And that tells us a couple of things. That tells us that the green LED is actually our ELRS binding LED. And that's the status that it tells us that the ELRS receiver is in. And it's telling us now that it's in Wi-Fi mode. We don't want it to be in Wi-Fi mode. We want it to be in bind mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to power it on just with the USB quickly three times. So one, two, and then on the third, we're going to leave it. And you can see now it's actually flashing twice really quickly, whereas before it was flashing once normally and then really, really quickly in quick succession. So what that tells us now, by looking at this LED here, tells us that the drone is now ready to be bound. We've not plugged a lipo in. We've just plugged it into the USB of the PC. The PC is actually off. That's how little power it needs. So it's lovely and safe, and we can now go to the next stage. So we're in bind mode. Leave it plugged in and just move it to the side. We know we're in bind mode because it's double flashing. Bring your controller back in. In fact, can I? Just so you can see. The, there you go. You can see the LED status there, and you'll see it change in a second. So what we're going to do now is we're going to press the system button, and we're going to look for our Express LRS Lua script. So this first page is our tools page, and this is where we find our Lua script. So everything in here is essentially a Lua script, and we can see Express LRS is here. So we're going to press it. Now, it's going to bring up loads and loads of things. There's only one thing that we need to worry about, and that's this thing here that says bind. So we're going to scroll down to it. And we're just going to push the button in. And if you watch the LED change, it's gone from double blinking. And it's now solid. And also, you, you know that you connected from two other reasons as well. One is it's just told you audibly. It's just said telemetry is connected. But also up here, there's a C where it used to be a single line. And that tells you that you're now connected to your drone. So if you've got a brand new TX-15 and you've got no models set up, and you need to set up your models and bind your quad. That's it. It's done. It's as easy as that. But if you plug the lipo in now and try to arm it, nothing would happen. So come with me to Betaflight. And what we're going to do is we're going to add our switches in so that we can get the thing armed and we can start to fly it. Now, you can see, first of all, we've left the drone plugged in. We've done nothing to it. But the green light's flashing again. And that's because I put my controller on charge. So the question you might have as somebody who is completely new, the, this particular member described himself as so new, he's, he was so green, his card was still printing, which I thought was quite funny. Um, so you might ask yourself a question, well, do we have to bind it and go through all that process again? No, we don't. If we wait half... There we go. It automatically will connect. And there's a couple of things on here, actually. Without using the widgets from Daniel Barris that I showed you the other week, there is a couple of things that show you. So this is actually your RSSI indicator. shows you how strong your are So 
also the green LED has now gone solid. So moving over to the PC and we're going to try and in fact let me move the quad out of the way because what's more important is you see what we're doing on the controller. Okay so I'm going to assume that you know how to download and install Betaflight and you've got this far. You plugged in because we've left it plugged in and you can see up here you've got a COM port. If you haven't got a COM port you need to come down here and you need to select the CP drivers, CP210 drivers, download them and install them. That should be all you need. If you've got a modern PC you should be absolutely fine. Once you're in this screen and you've got the word COM up here, it could be COM7, it could be COM12, it could be COM1. As long as it says COM something followed by Betaflight, you're all good. You're going to press the connect button and that's going to take you in to Betaflight. Now, you've got a visual representation of what the drone is doing, but we're not going to worry about that because we know that this is all set up from the factory from Beta FPV. There's nothing that we need to do. We're not going to look at anything else on here now other than our modes tab and let me delete everything so you might come into here and you might see something like this or you might see something like this or you might have an arm or whatever already set up but you need to do it for yourself to make sure that you've got the right switch for the right one so what do I mean well let me show you because I'm rambling on we need an arm switch, first of all. That's the most important one. So if we press add range, and here it says auto, which means it's going to automatically select the switch that you press next. So if I press this switch, it's gone to aux 2. And if we move that switch backwards and forwards now, look, we can see that this vertical bar is moving across. And when the vertical and the horizontal meet, that is the position where that switch is active. So, we're going to move this to the right hand side so that when the switch is all the way down, it's armed. And we're going to hit save. We've now set up our arm switch. Easy as that. As a newbie, I would probably recommend that you add yourself angle and horizon mode. It's not something that I use or particularly like. Sorry, my tiny book charge is going off. You'll see on November the 6th why. If we hit this switch and move one of them to the end and one of them to the middle, you can now see in the middle you're in angle mode and at the bottom you're in horizon mode. Now, as a standard, you won't have GPS on your Beta FPV Power 20 Pro, so we don't need to add GPS rescue. I would add a beeper. And again, I will put it on this switch here. So I've pressed this switch here to add our beeper. And again, you just need to make sure that the horizontal and the vertical cross each other so that it's armed in that position. The other thing that I generally advise people to do is to add a pre-arm, but on a Pavo 20 Pro, necessarily need to do that. However, I'm going to follow my own advice here and I'm going to make sure that we add a pre-arm. So we're going to add range, it's set to auto, and this time I'm going to press this button, this button here. Now, when I let go of that button, you can see that it falls back. So it's like an ignition switch almost. So if I move this bar to the right and hit save, when I now press this button and hold it, pre-arm is enabled. If I let go of that and hit arm, it's not going to arm. So I have to keep hold of that and then hit arm and then I can let go of it. If you want to skip this step, skip this step. It may be a little bit too confusing, but I'm very evangelical about it and I'm always going to suggest it. The other one is this one which is user one and you might think well, what's what's user one? This is for your LEDs. So if we just do this and you can see my hand is lit up now. So if we we can have them on or we can have them off. And that's it. You've set up all of your switches in beta flight. You are literally now ready to go and fly. The question I don't know is whether or not you know how to bind your goggles. So I'm going to stop this tutorial here and I'm going to come back and speak to you. I'll upload this as it is, find out if you know how to bind your goggles. I've got plenty of other videos on it if you don't.
but this should get you in the air hopefully without too much of trouble now in fact just before I stop this here go into pit tuning go into rate profiles do not copy these numbers do not copy these numbers whatever you do but copy these numbers so change these numbers to 10 and I had a newbie flying this the other day, so I put it on 0.45 for Expo. You might want to do the same thing here. You might want to add 0.45 to each one of these end columns and definitely add 10 to these. And what that does is, as you can see on here, it just makes it in the middle of the stick nice and slow, but then at the end of the stick really fast. But do not change these numbers or do not copy these numbers sorry these numbers will make your drone really really fast and potentially uncontrollable copy them when you get used to flying but let's get you in the air first these should say 670 across all of them leave them at 670 but definitely change these to 10 and maybe add a little bit of expo as well and that just helps the center of your stick be less twitchy so it's easy for you to land easy for you to take off and easy for you to just fly around in a circle just getting used to everything that you've now set up okay good luck let me know how you get on thanks for watching everybody peace out youtube and i have had a chat and we believe that this is the video that you'll like the most so watch it and let me know if they're right